Welcome back to this week's Ask GMBN where we get to answer all those questions that you've been leaving in the comments section down below. Hashtag Ask GMBN. And we got Doddy to help us with all these questions. How Let's kick it off. Okay, question number one, Doddy, is coming in from Jordan. Says, hi guys. Hey. Hey Jordan. Lo love the show. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just getting into mountain biking and about to have a go at some trails on my new Norco Fluid FS4 2019 model. Nice bike, that. Yeah. Mm. It's, a, it's got standard pedals at the moment, but I'm recovering from a serious ankle injury and found that when pedaling, it actually has a lot of twisting involved. Would clipped pedals be better? Um, they, they may or may not. <laughs> you couldn't say for sure. Um, with an ankle injury, if you're looking for clipless pedals, I'd say look for something that's got float on there. So for example, Shimano pedals have a bit more of a locked in feel and that's a really good thing, but it might not be good for your ankle. So something like a Crank Brothers pedal or perhaps a look or a time that have a little bit more movement, um, basically so you, it's not gonna strain your ankle too much. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it could be. Yeah, good. just unclipping potentially yeah. could be the worst thing ever. But a bit of, um, what do you call it, therapy. You can get these cushions mm -hmm. with point like spikes on that you stand on. I did it, I had an ankle injury and you just stand on it and let your let all those little muscles build up before you start throwing yourself in the deep end and going on some pedals. Um, yeah, just one one other thing actually with the pedals. Um, various different manufacturers offer different cleats for their pedals. Uh, if you went for Shimano, for example, they do a multi-release cleat, so you don't just twist your ankle to get out. You can actually twist it at an angle, so oh. that might be beneficial yeah, yeah. if your ankle's weak. Uh, and also, Crank Brothers make various different cleats with different amounts of movement before you clip out. Some of them's as much as 20 degrees, and some is zero. So yeah. you can actually choose when you want to clip out. So they're definitely features worth looking at. Mm. Do your homework before you're getting into it. Yeah. It's a lot to look at. Mm. Uh, we got one here from Aslak. Aslak? Aslak. Aslak? I have around, uh, I have rounded off my bolt on my top cap on my bike. Ugh. Ugh, yeah. I've heard, I've heard that tightening it, uh, it until the fork stops moving. So basically, starts the wobble. Like yeah. The headset wobble. Yeah. So you're pulling the bearings together. Yeah. That's what that does. Yeah but it didn't get tight, so what should I do? Um, well, first you've got to get that bolt out. That can be a pain. Um, sometimes, if you get a set of mole grips or some sort of locking pliers, uh, use a bit of an old T-shirt so you don't scratch the top cap. Sometimes just counterclockwise turning the top cap a little bit can loosen the bolt enough to just wedge something else in there, like say a Torx key, something mm, like that, yeah, yeah. can help you get that bolt out. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say without seeing your one, but you could get it out, I think. I don't think it'd be too much of a problem. Yeah. Um, it sounds to me like you need another headset spacer under that top cap. It sounds like that. Because the whole point is it pulls it all together, basically takes up the slack um, to tighten your headset bearings, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you might need one of those. Good oh, luck getting that bolt out. Yeah, oh, that little star nut could be moving up and down the barrel. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah, that another can happen. One. In which case, you need another star nut, and they're, yeah. they're only a couple of quid, they're pretty cheap. Yeah. And well, you have to hammer the old one out the direction that they come in. Yeah. yeah. We've done a good video about this, Doddy. Oh yeah. Watch this. Sounds like me. Next we have our headset spacers. Now these are a really important part. I'm gonna show you why. Now as a very crude demonstration, I've removed too many spacers here. So as you can imagine, no matter how much I do up this bolt and it pressurizes the system, it's never gonna remove that play there. So when we put the correct amount of spacers back on, this top cap and bolt will actually adjust the preload of the system. And what that's gonna do, is it's actually gonna pull the steerer up to add tension to the system. Full of tech you are, man. Full of tech. Good person. Fountain of knowledge. You like are to, a uh, fountain of yeah. knowledge, yeah. yes. So next question is from Flo. Um, cool name, by the way, Flo. Yeah. Um, I've got a cockpit fit question. I'm 186 centimeters, so it's about six foot one. So tall. about your size. Yeah, similar height. Um, a uh, little shorter, actually. Oh, okay. So you're fine, I'm six foot three. So sorry. Um, he's got 2018 Canyon Spectral AL and large, super Ooh. good bike. Uh, it has a large head tube. However, when I did rides on that bike, 40 kilometer sort of ride, so that is a long time in the saddle, mm -hmm. developed pressure and pain in my hands. So that is that is something well, we'll get to this in a second. Um, it always felt like my hands were too far away with a 50 mil stem, so he shortened it to a 35. Um, but then he couldn't work out the handling, essentially, so your front wheel's going a bit light. Mm -hmm. So um, you did the right thing by shortening it. Obviously, the longer the bike is, you're going to have more pressure on your hands, but you can also raise and lower by either putting headset spaces above or below the stem if your steerage tube length allows it. 
or by having a higher or a lower rise bar. Um, there's a lot of tuning you can do actually to do this and it is a little bit tricky because it does involve having to have a lot of those things. That's where your friends come in handy because your friends are quite likely to have different rise bars mm. between them all so you just have to say please guys can I try I everything? Use this see if it works yeah um, but by shortening it you're right you might put you in a slightly more upright position which means you're going to struggle waiting at that front wheel um, what I tend to do is have a short stem and I have uh, on most of the bikes except my mega I like to have it slammed down low with a high rise bar on the mega just because it's got a short head you end up actually running quite a few spaces yeah. under it but it does take a little time to get accustomed to that and don't be afraid of waiting at that front wheel mm. really get in get get aggressive it does take a bit of while to yeah I've done exactly the same same thing i went from a 50 mil to a 35 mm. felt like the 35 was super short for me yeah didn't like it and i went back to the 50 and i just raised it a little bit yeah like you did and it kind of it worked it did, did well it raising did it help. technically shortens it yeah because yeah. the angle of your steering tube the yeah. higher your eyes you stem like the shorter your cockpit gets mm. uh, yes yeah, so it does take a little time to figure those things out there's no right or wrong uh, everyone is built differently mm. uh, i've got a short upper body but i've got really long arms so uh, that's why a short stem and a wide bar kind of suits me. Um, and bar width actually is another thing. The shorter yeah. your bars are, the more upright you'll be. The longer your bars are, the more lower down you're going to be. Um, so that is something you can... You, a way to play with that is to try a wider set of bars and then just experiment with moving your grips and your cockpit controls in and out and you'll find naturally a place that suits you. Full of knowledge. I told you this man has done it. He's done it all. Next question, Don. Done a few things, been around the clock. <laughs> I'm not spring chicken anymore. Um, Toby Raspin is next. I've got a Norco fluid, another Norco. Ooh, nice. Norco's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a fluid one, 2019 hardtail, brand yeah. new. Been playing around with the idea of doing a mega avalanche. Oh, yes. On a hardtail. Um, what do you mean, yes? You lunatic, don't do it on a hardtail. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta push those boundaries. He's, he's the right I've, one to, to talk about this. I've actually done this. I've done it on my new proof yeah. mega, uh, scout. That's yeah. a hardtail. Uh, a few things I did upgrade. Uh, you, you obviously can do it, because I've done it. It's a hell of a ride. It's rough. Uh, I changed a few things. I put downhill casing tires. I put inserts front and rear. Yeah, that's it's, essential for that. It's essential because it's rocky terrain. You want to do that. You want some aggressive tires. Mm. because. You just don't want to get puncture. Uh, I upgraded the front suspension. If you've got the budget, upgrading that front suspension. I think I, I raised it by 10 to 20 mil I, I think, on the Lyric. I think no, you might have gone the, more on, the, um, on that one. Yeah. I think it's one, yours it was, was 140 and you yeah. went up to 170. Yeah, it, it was big. On that fork that you that you didn't buy, that you took off Neil's bike, that you said you borrowed. You mean? don't want Neil to know that. Neil doesn't know that yet. He does not know that He yet. still actually doesn't know, I can't it's believe it. It's still on my bike. Um, one thing to say, if you do upgrade your fork, that's a great thing, but bear in mind it won't feel as nice on other terrain. It'll mm. feel great for the Mega, but not as good back home. Mm. Um, something that you might want to do as a cheaper way around, instead of just getting a new fork, is to see if your fork can be upgraded just by changing the air tube internally. Mm. So that's a small part of the fork that can cost as little as 30 or 40 quid. Yep. Right, admittedly, that's a bit of money, but that means you could have two forks in one. You could swap that part out and have a shorter that's fork a good one. or a longer fork. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously a lot cheaper than getting a new one. And actually something I noticed on your bike, which we haven't mentioned, was there's quite a few scuffs and scratches on the down tube from rocks and stuff flying it's up. It's gonna happen, it's yeah, inevitable. Yeah, so get yourself some protective tape to look after your paintwork because that place eats bikes oh, up so much. It kills bikes. Yeah. But yeah, any bike can do it, you just have to be mad enough to decide if you want to do it on a hardtail. I'm still suffering. Oh yeah, and put there. Loctite on everything, <laughs> everything. or Threadlock basically, because especially everything your, comes loose. Especially your rotors, you don't want your brakes to fail on a yeah. hardtail. Yeah, chain rings as well, if you haven't got a single, uh, single piece, basically bolt on chain ring, if you've got old fashioned ones with uh, four or five chain ring bolts, make sure you put loads of Threadlock on those, because mm -hmm. they will rattle loose and that's it, your ride's over then. Yeah. And learn to, be, learn to ride clipped in as well, that's a good one. Yeah, actually that's a great shout, because that's going to save your hands a bit, because you feel I'm gonna be bouncing everywhere, so. Exactly. Yeah, cool. Um, all right, next up's from Combo. Oh. Can you run a bike with less travel on the front? Going the That's other it. way now. Yeah. Um, We're I going from you putting could. lots or going later. You could. You could, and some bikes in the past have done that. So I did a retro bike check when we did Retro Week. Yep an old bike called a Foes, and that I think had uh, 80 mil on the front, maybe, yeah, maybe 75, and it had 150 on the back. Uh, but that was because when the guy, when Brent Foes designed the bike, there wasn't a fork long enough, <laughs> and he got annoyed, so he actually, on the next iteration of the bike, he designed his own 150 mil Flippin fork. Wow, that's good going. Um, you can do it, but it's but why very would, nice. Yeah, why would you want to reduce the travel that you've got on the front end? You could actually go for a negative rise stem. 
slightly. Oh, if you want to lower the front. If you just want to lower yeah. the front. Yeah. If you can't get it low enough for you. A lot of the XC racers do that. Yeah, yeah. They run super low front ends. Yeah, Nino shirt has got one that's like six done like this much. Yeah, it's Who's crazy. Who's the big isn't it? tall guy? His one. Oh, just, Sam Gaze. That's it. Oh, he's go sailing guy. with his one. It's, yeah. like, it's like a tiller on the back of a it's, boat. Yeah, it's the ridiculous. longest stem we've ever seen. Yeah. But it works for him. Yeah. Try everything. Um, yeah, but don't do less travel on the front. Mm -hmm. That's just weird. That's Maybe keep it the same as the back or preferably yeah. slightly more. Mm -hmm. It's a good balance. Um, next, that was from Nikki1470. Uh, um, I have a corner I really struggle with. This Ooh. is one for you, Blake. No, I... <laughs> After a fast rolling downhill section, I'm struggling to judge the speed. Yeah, that is a tricky thing. Mm -hmm. It's a reverse camber. All right, so it's an off camber, off camber. Um, uphill, sharp left, almost a hairpin. The only way I can get around this corner is by using my brakes to slow down on the fast running and slowing down right before the corner. Mm -hmm. I find it hard to lean the bike, um, so I'm also a bit upright as I turn. Any advice? Well, that's hard. So if you're going fast down a hill, down a mountain, yeah. down the trail, and then you come introduced with a, like a hairpin off camber, and off camber yeah. with roots and stuff. Yeah, off camber's the hardest thing to ride. It's the hardest anyway. thing to ride, yeah, because yeah, your bike's just going to lose traction so much quicker. Yeah. Um, the best thing is to slow down before the turn. Do all your braking before the turn, before, like, not just doing it all in the turn. Do it all before, and then get a nice gradual speed into it. Hmm and then fast out. Uh, it's all about body position on this, body weight transfer. You want to keep your bike quite low, but you want to you want to be quite stood up. Hmm. You want to get as much grip on those tires as possible because you don't yeah. want to, you don't want to lose grip in a turn, especially the front. Yeah, keep loads of weight on your so your outside pedal yeah. to really keep that weight on keep your tire sidewalls to cut them in. Mm -hmm. um, something else as well actually, just with any turn in general, I think is to try and straighten it out as much as you can. Yeah. If you're making too much of a turn, it's like it's really hard yeah. to keep your speed. Come in so wide. So come in nice and wide, yeah. like Blake said, yeah. And if you can, if there's opportunity, if it's off camber, quite often you can cut the inside and there's sometimes like some grass or other yeah. stuff you can find a little bit more traction. Yeah. Um, so yeah, experiment. Try some different speeds going in and out. Yeah. Uh, basically what Blake said, yeah, yeah, it is really about your position. Exactly. We've done a video all about this, how to corner fast. This could help you out. It's always good to try and open up the corner as much as possible by entering the corner as wide as you can. You can see in this corner, I can actually go really wide and use this part of a berm on the right hand side to square off the first part of the corner. However, to me, that doesn't look any better because I'm gonna end up going too far to the inside on the exit of the corner where it's really off camber. So I'm gonna to stick to the inside, but open it up as much as I can and make one big smooth curve. Now, hopefully that video has helped you out. Uh, it's, in, it's linked in the description down below if you wanna go watch the full video so you can get to understand how to ride corners fast. Now we got one coming in from Cohen. Hi guys, hey, 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 love the show, thank you very much. I was wondering if, you, if it is bad for suspension to ride jumps and do drop offs while they're locked out. Um, mm. It's not the best, mm -mm. to be honest. Nah. Um, ultimately, it's not gonna break, it won't feel very nice. Mm. Uh, when you do a lockout, essentially it's a series of shims that basically block holes up on the fork um, to stop the oil flowing through. Yep. So if you repeatedly do this, there's a chance you could sort of bend those shims a bit, but they are pretty cheap to replace, they're only shims. Yeah, but um, you've got to take your forks apart. Well, yeah, there is the that, it was the labor charge it will cost you. Um, for general riding, jumping off the odd curb and that's not going to do it any harm, mm. but if you repeatedly do it, it could damage your suspension in the long term. Okay, now um, he, it sounds like he wants to have a stiff fork yeah. because he wants to do some jumps and stuff. Now, yeah. how would you go about doing that to make it a little bit stiffer there's instead of just locking it there's up? There's a couple of ways. So if it's an air fork, you obviously want to put more air in there to make it firmer. <laughs> um, and then you want to adjust more rebound damping to control that because you're effectively it's kinetic energy, your stored energy is being released. So you want more damping more air in there, and potentially some volume spaces oh, if your fork is lot. compatible. Um, for jumping, you pretty much, a lot of the guys who jump like Blake, you've just put the maximum amount of volume spaces. So essentially what that does is change the air volume, it reduces it internally. So as the fork goes through its travel, it gets harder and harder and harder. So it really resists bottoming out. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully that's helped you out there. Uh, Alex, we've got one. Uh, I've been riding for about three years and I've known I've known myself to get a bit wow, what, round, rowdy on the trails. Oh, yeah. I recently broke my femur. Oh, oh, this is terrible. On a tree after two small drops. Uh, would you say when having experience with smaller features often catch you off guard more mm. than the big <laughs> ones? <laughs> yes. Yeah. The silly things do get you out. It says why and always end up in injuries. Yeah, do you know, I, one of my worst injuries actually, I just snapped a chain. I was pedaling along, and my chain snapped, and uh, I landed face first and broke my nose, my cheek, eye socket. 
I was on the floor before I realised what had happened. Wow. So yeah, that stuff is really unlucky. Because you just, you get too comfortable. Yeah. You get, you think, oh, this is easy. Yeah. And well, you lose all concentration. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because you see the guys and girls doing like the top World Cup downhill yeah. stuff. And the terrain they're riding is so insane. Insane. But I guess they're so like wired in. Yeah, yeah. Because it's that insane mm -hmm. that you don't see as many gnarly crashes, but. Oh, it's just, yeah. you just, you lose all, you just, don't, you just get too comfortable. I've done it doing a wheelie. I've just not even thought about doing my back brake. I loop out. Oh, yeah. Oh, that hurts if you get it wrong. Yeah. It's concentration. Yeah. Everything that you are riding, you should be concentrating no matter what. I mean, it sounds like you really injured yourself. You really injured really yourself. Really unlucky. Normally, if you make a little slip up, it tends to be a bit of a slap and resets you basically. Yeah. But yeah, it sounds like you've really learned the hard way. Oh. Yeah. Moving on. Hey, Mish. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm just tossing up between a new carbon nuke proof reactor, you know oh, all yeah. about that, I and do. a carbon nuke proof mega, I know all about that. Yep. I ride in New Zealand, the trails, and do a lot of downhill, but I am not sure whether the travel on the mega is too much, or th any thoughts? Well, for a start, I just and there's not enough travel. I'm a man. You want more travel? I want lots of travel, because <laughs> yeah. I like a tank. Yeah. Um, see, I'm the other way. I like to pedal a bit more. Um, the reactor, all right, so it is a very different bike to the Mega. The Mega, no doubt, it's in the name. It was designed originally for the Mega Avalanche. This is a beast of a bike. Mm -hmm. You can point this down anything and it will do it. And you can still pedal it all day as well, to be you fair. Yep. Um, but the reactor is designed more around pedaling. So it's less travel. Um, the travel's probably a little bit more active on it. It's a very different feeling suspension to mm. the Mega. I think it could handle a lot. The top spec ones actually have a 164, kind of like a bit more travel Whoa. up front. Whoa. So I think it shows you the intentions of what it could do. Mm -hmm. um, but. If you're doing more downhill stuff, I'd go for a Mega. Yeah, he does say honest. that. A lot. They're so does good. does a lot of downhill. Yeah, they're so good, and they keep coming back for more. I oh, think. They're, li they're light enough. It's not that much of a chore. We've got pedaling all day, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. if, if you want to try and make your decisions, this man could potentially help you out with this video. Take a look at this. Now, who's this bike for? Obviously, this looks quite aggressive, but this is not the Enduro bike. The Mega is still the Enduro bike. This is the trail bike. This is the everyday bike, the bike for thrashing down the woods. And of course, there's different options you can have, 27 half, the 29. So accordingly, the suspension feels very different to what it does on the Mega. The Mega is all about big bump performance, hitting stuff hard and fast. This is very supple, it's very supportive. There you go, that's the end of our Ask GMBN. We do every Thursday. Try and ask all those questions. And thank you so much, Dodie, for coming in. Hey, it was great to be here. Yeah, and get those questions in underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. Hashtag Ask GMBN in the comments down below. If you want to stick around, don't forget to hit that globe to subscribe because you're missing out on some rad stuff. Also, click that little notification bell because every time we make a video, you'll get a little notification on your device and tells you. Yeah. And if you want to continue binge watching GMBN, click this video right here and it's all about trails. It's good. Ta-ta for now. Bye.